DNA purification allows us to extract great amounts of genomic DNA samples from a limited source to satisfy the requirements of our research and it reduces the amount of contaminants that can compromise the results of cell research and shorten the shelf life of the DNA samples. Contaminants increases the odds of getting erroneous results during experimentations. There are several strategies to purify DNA, like electroelution, which consists on separating the DNA by running it in an agarose or polyacrylamide gel. It can also be extracted by using enzymes to degrade the agarose and then be purified with phenol and finally placed on ethanol. If our DNA is under conditions of high concentrations of catrophic salts, we can use silica type columns to recover the DNA. There are several methods to separate and purify the DNA. In this chart we can see the differences between these methods, uh, the advantages and disadvantages. Now, there are kits that make the extraction and purification easier. Some examples of these kits are the ZR Genomic DNA, which uses a column purification process by DNA retention filter released in less than 25 minutes. It does not use proteinase K, Harmless without phenol or chloroform. Typical fragment sizes ranges from 25 to 35 kilobases. It needs water bath or heat block of 55 Celsius degree, microcentrifuge and vertex. Another one is the DNA Clean and Concentrator 5, which provides purification by removing the DNA polymerases and modifying enzymes, RNA polymerases, ligases, kinases, nucleases, phosphates, and restriction in the nucleases, as well as free DNTPs and their analogs, including radial and fluorescent derivatives. The fragment sizes are of 25 micrograms total DNA, it, and it needs a microcentrifuge. The method that we, the kit that we use in our process is the kit pure link the, the of intrabagin, a silica membrane based isolated pressure. Some of these methods are more efficient than others, especially when we are considering the size of our DNA. For example, electrolution is a good method that we, when we are dealing with DNA fragments of over 20 kilobases and it can be deal in less than one hour. We can also use agarase enzymes when we are dealing with DNA with high molecular weight. While silica combs are good to purify very small DNA fragments like plasmids. The optimum index for DNA purification is about 1.8 and 2. Our study sample had an index of 14.9, which indicates a non-pure DNA sample and without a good yield. The fragment of yield observed in the spectrophotometer was a residue of DNTPs. It's correct to expect a higher value than the normal range. The reason why we decided to analyze this sample was that the amplified PCR product was too little to cut from the yield and it was not even visible. Another reason why the index a260 over A208 was higher than normal, could be that the blank use had a different pH from the pH of the purified DNA, or even that the cell was not clean, causing variation in the diffraction of the light. Spectrophotometry and electrophoresis are important methods to analyze purified DNA because usually the index A260 over A208 does not show the exact purity of the samples, but electrophoresis does. The electrophoresis is a good way to reaffirm the purity of a sample as the quality of it is clearly shown. The critical steps of the purification of DNA is the exposure to UV light when cutting the band of interest from the yield. The UV light can cause DNA mutation or damage if time exposure is too long. Also, the electrophoresis has to be done in order to cut the sample from the yield and measure its purity, it's essential to do it quickly. The pure link kit used in this practice has many advantages over the purification methods. It can purify DNA fragments not caring about the melting points of agarose yields or the buffers, and also the procedure takes, takes and also the procedure takes about 40 minutes or less. In a few words, the PCR product was purified from the agarose gel with a pure link kit 
2112 kit from Invitrogen. 0.2298 mg of gel were used with 689.4 microliters of buffer L3. It was left 10 minutes at 50 degrees and mixed by inversion every 3 minutes. Twice, 450 microliters were loaded in the silica column to be centrifuged at 1200 g's for 1 minute. Afterwards, 500 microliters of buffer W1 were added and centrifuged at 12,000 g's for 3 minutes. The sample was loaded with buffer E5 at room temperature for 1 minute and centrifuged again at 12,000 g's for 1 minute. The spectrophotometer results were 640.7 nanograms per microliter and a absorbance of values 260 over 280 of 14.9494, which means it was not a good sample. The sample, in fact, was not an amplified gene. Instead, the DNTP's primers and specific products were cut off from the gel.